Hi friends, I have a book for you called Uncle Jed's Barbershop. A barbershop is the place where you go to get your hair cut. Now a barbershop usually provides haircuts mostly for boys and men. Sometimes women go there, but women usually go to a hair salon and men go to a barber shop, okay? A place where men get their hair cut. And this book is published by Scholastic, written by Marguerite King Mitchell, and illustrated by James Ransom. Now this is a story that takes place a long time ago, about a hundred years ago, and there was something called the Great Depression going on. Now the Great Depression was a time when there were lots of people who didn't have jobs, that everybody was out of work, and so there wasn't very much money. People didn't have money for things. And so everybody was struggling, struggling to find enough money to pay their bills and to get enough food on the table in order to eat. And this is about a man, Uncle Jed, whose dream it was to have a barber shop. Now, about 100 years ago, another thing that also happened during that time in the United States was people were not nice to black people. Uh, for no reason at all, they were not nice to people who had black skin. And so this story talks about that as well. Now, we're going to read this to find out what Uncle Jed wanted and whether or not he was able to get it at the end of the story. You're going to learn more about Uncle Jed, and I want you to think about what kind of a person he was. We're going to talk about his character when we're finished. That means the kind of words that you would use to describe what kind of person he was, whether he was nice or mean, whether he was thoughtful about other people, or whether he was selfish, and those kinds of things, okay? Now I want you to also think about when we read this story, who is talking in the story? Who is the voice in the story. Um, when the author wrote the story, who did, she, who did she decide was going to be telling the story? Okay, so think about that as we're reading. All right, Uncle Jed's Barbershop. And this took place in about 1930, so almost 100 years ago. Beautiful illustrations. Uncle Jed's Barbershop. Jedediah Johnson was my granddaddy, that means grandpa, grand, granddaddy's brother, so my great uncle. Everybody has their favorite relative. Well, Uncle Jedediah was mine. He used to come by our house every Wednesday night with his clippers. He was the only black barber in the country. Daddy said that before Uncle Jed started cutting hair, he and Granddaddy used to have to go 30 miles to get a haircut because they were not allowed to go to a barber shop that, uh, that where white people went. It was not allowed. After Uncle Jed cut my daddy's hair, he would slather, that means soap up, a short brush with soap and spread it over my daddy's face and shave him. Then he started over on my granddaddy. I always asked Uncle Jed to cut my hair but Mama wouldn't let him. So he would run the clippers on the back of my neck. These are clippers. It's kind of like a special cutting tool. And just pretend to cut my hair. He even spread lotion on my neck. I would smell wonderful all day. Have you decided who is the voice? Who is telling the story? Who do you think's telling the story? Yeah, it's this little girl. 
And I think that it is the author who is telling her own story about her Uncle Jed. Mm -hmm. She's telling her own true story. When he was done, he would pick me up and sit me on his lap and tell me about the barber shop he was going to open one day and about all the fancy equipment that would be in it. The sinks would be so shiny they sparkled. The floors would be so clean you could see yourself. He was going to have four barber chairs and outside was going to be a big, tall, red and white barber pole. Oftentimes at a barber shop, they will have a pole that has a red and white stripe around it and that tells you that's a barber. He told me he was saving his money so that he could have this. He had been saying the same things for years. Nobody believed him. People didn't have dreams like that in those days. We lived in the South. Most people were poor. My daddy owned a few acres of land and so did a few others, but most people were sharecroppers. That meant they lived in a shack and worked on someone else's land in exchange for a share of that crop. So that means they would do all of the work on the land. They did not own the land if they were a sharecropper. And then they would get to take a little bit of the vegetables or the whatever they grew on the land for their food. And then the owner of the land would get all the rest of the vegetables that, that this person had had spent all that time growing and spent all that work, doing all the work. He had to give it over to the owner, okay? So a sharecropper did not own the land. They had to work so hard on all of the land and they only got to take a small part of the crop. The crop means what they grow on it, okay? When I was five years old, I got sick. This particular morning, I didn't come into the kitchen while Mama was fixing breakfast. Mama and Daddy couldn't wake me up. My nightgown and the bedclothes were all wet where I had sweated. Have you ever gotten so sick that you were all sweaty and wet when, after you were sleeping? Yeah, that usually means that you have a fever. Yeah, and that's pretty bad. It means you're sick. Mama wrapped me in a blanket while Daddy went outside and hitched the horse to the wagon. See, this is so long ago. They did not have cars. This is how they got to the town. We had to travel about 20 miles into town to the hospital. That would take a long time. It was middle day of the day when we got there. We had to go to the colored waiting room. Long time ago, they used to call black people colored people. So they had a special waiting room at the hospital where the black people had to go. They couldn't go into the area where all the white people were. They had to go to the place for just for colored people or black people. In those days, they kept the blacks and the whites separate. There were separate public restrooms, separate water fountains, separate schools even. It was called segregation. So in the hospital, we had to go to the colored waiting room. Even though I was unconscious, that means she couldn't wake up because she was so sick. The doctors wouldn't look at me. They wouldn't take care of me until they had finished with all the white patients. And when the doctors did examine me, they told my daddy 
that I needed an operation and that it would cost $300. $300 is a lot of money today. A hundred years ago, that would have been almost all the money they would have for the whole year. That would be crazy. $300 was a lot of money in those days. My daddy didn't have that kind of money, and the doctors wouldn't do the operation until they had the money. Oh my goodness, this little girl is very sick. Can you imagine what her daddy was thinking? He didn't have the money, and she was very sick. The doctor would not take care of her. My mama bundled me back up in the blanket and they took me home. Mama held me in her arms all night. She kept me alive until daddy found Uncle Jed. He found him early the next morning in the next county on his way to cut somebody's hair. Daddy told him about me. Uncle Jed leaned on his cane that means that helps him walk because he must have had a little hard time walking. And he stared straight ahead. He told Daddy that the money didn't matter. He couldn't let anything happen to his Sarah Jean. Well, I had the operation for a long time after that. Uncle Jed came to my house every day to see how I was doing. I know that $300 did, was a lot of money, and it meant that he was not going to be able to open his barber shop. If he gave them that money he had saved up, he would not have the money to open his barber shop. Uncle Jed came awfully close to opening his shop a few years after my operation. He had saved enough money to buy the land and build the building, but he still needed the money for all the equipment. Remember, he needed the sinks and all the other things that he needed. Anyway, Uncle Jed came by the house. We had just finished supper when there was a knock on the door. It was Mr. Ernest Walters, a friend of Uncle Jed's. He had come by to tell Uncle Jed about the bank failing. That means the bank closed. That was where Mr. Walters and Uncle Jed had their money. Uncle Jed had over $3,000 in the bank and it was gone the bank just closed their doors and they did not have any money. That really happened. Uncle Jed just stood there a long time before he said anything. Then he told Mr. Walters that even though he was very, very disappointed, that means sad, he would just have to start all over again. Talk about some hard times. That was the beginning of the Great Depression. That's what we call that time in history when the banks closed and people didn't have jobs and it, everybody was poor and nobody had food. Well, not enough food. It was a very hard time. Nobody had much money. But Uncle Jed kept going around to his customers, cutting their hair. Even though they couldn't pay him, his customers shared with them whatever they had. Maybe they had a few extra potatoes, they'd give it to him. Maybe they had some eggs, they'd give that to him. And then um, a hot meal, maybe some eggs, vegetables from their garden. And when they were able to pay him again, then they did. Uncle Jed started saving all over again. You know, there's a lot of people who are really struggling right now. Some people don't have jobs. 
Some people are having a hard time paying their rent, paying f enough, having enough money to pay for food or pay for their bills. And it's hard. But you know what? It's happened before. And there's been a lot of people who just know how to keep on trying and keep on going. And maybe your mom and dad have gone through this before um, in their lives. I bet they have. And they know they can keep on trying and it will be okay. And you know what? It will be okay. We'll get through this. And that's what happens. A lot of times people get through it. They keep trying. By goodness, look at this. Old Uncle Jed finally got his barber shop. He opened it on his 79th birthday. Wow, he was 79 years old. That's pretty old. It had everything just like he said it would. Big, comfortable chairs, four cutting stations, you name it. The floors were so clean, they sparkled. On opening day, people came from all over the county. There were old, uh, they were old Uncle Jed's customers. He had walked to see them for so many years, and that day, they all came to see him. I believe he cut hair all night and all the next day and the next night and the day after that. That man was so glad to have that shop, he didn't need any sleep. Of course, I was there too. But look, she's a grown-up now, isn't she? And I couldn't have missed it for the world. When I sat in one of his big barber chairs, Uncle Jed patted the back of my neck with lotion like he always had. Then he twirled me around and around in the barber chair. Uncle Jed died not too long after that. But I think he died a happy man. You see, he made his dream come true even when nobody else believed that he could. And you know what? He taught me to dream too. If you set your mind to it, you can dream and you can do it too. You just have to keep trying. So what kind of a man was Uncle Jed? Do you think he was a kind man or a mean man? Do you think he was a generous, giving man? Or do you think he was a selfish man? Do you think he was the kind of man who kept trying? Or do you think he was the kind of person who gave up? Yeah, I think he was that kind of man. There you go.